bit of a holding pattern here on the BWI Daily Edition. I'm your host, Thomas Frank Carr. Uh, there's no new information as of recording about who's going to be the next defensive coordinator. We have no new information on Anthony Poindexter and what's the fate there with reports being that he is all but the next coach at Virginia already. But until it's official, we can't ring that bell and give you that information and tell you the impact of all that stuff. So keep that monitored. BlueWhiteIllustrated.com. If any of that stuff does break, you get a full breakdown from Greg Pickle, Ryan Snyder, Nate Bauer, Dave Eckert, and of course, myself here on the Daily Edition. What we're talking about today is the transfer portal. And the news this week was that earlier in the week, I believe it was late Monday night, uh, Penn State offered linebacker from UNLV, Jacoby Winman, a spot in the on the team. They offered him a scholarship for 2022. So we'll see if he accepts. But in the meantime, we're learning more about what Penn State's looking for in the transfer portal every time they go and they make a move. So we're going to take a look at his film and some of his stats to see what sort of player he is. And I do find it interesting that the stats and, and the film ultimately get to the same spot, but with a very different journey involved in how a lot of that sausage is made. So we'll take a look at all of that today, and I'll give you the information of what I saw on film. Now, I would like to do T. Frank's film room on Winman. That part, not allowed to do. And I was going to do one on one of the Penn State prospects today, but unfortunately, uh, that's not going to happen. And if you're upset about that, me too, first off, uh, but you can take it up with the highly electrocuted squirrel that's outside of my apartment that stepped on the transformer this morning and knocked out the power in the building for most of the, the day. So the lights are back on now. We're up and running. We're doing the show. But that's why we have a little bit of an abridged version today. So I just wanted to give you a heads up on that. Uh, but first off, before we get to any of that stuff, Manscaped 20% off plus free shipping with the promo code 20PSU. And yes, I've seen some of the comments. I, I, I hear you people that are uncomfortable talking about this topic, and that's natural, that's understandable, but let me, li let, me let you in on a little bit of a secret here. And this is behind the, the behind the scenes knowledge of the show. 93% of you watching are guys. First off, we need to get more ladies in the room. I know women like football, so that's on me. We need to appeal to a broader audience, get more people in the tent. But secondly, guys, if we can't talk about male grooming here amongst the dudes, when are we ever going to talk about it? 20% off plus free shipping, promo code 20PSU. Talking a little bit later in the show, don't worry for all you sensitive people out there. I'm focusing right now on the body wash and the two-in-one conditioner they sent me a couple weeks ago and uh, some legitimately, I don't want to oversell it, but life-changing stuff maybe. At least my day-to-day -day life has changed because of the two-in-one conditioner. That was, that was a game changer for me. So let's get into it. Right now, the transfer portal. And we're talking about Jacoby Winman. He is a uh, lower recruited player. He was uh, not in the top 500 or 800 in the On3 database in 2019 uh, from UNLV. He's put in, uh, I think, five games in 2020 and then a full season as a starter in 2021. And like I said before, the stats and the, the video kind of the, the film review end in the same place, but it's how we get there that is, is different in that I don't think he is everything that these stats say. Coverage grade in the PFF database, not great. Allowed 82% uh, reception percentage against top 25 in yards allowed. So none of those are great numbers. And uh, here are the rest of them. Jacoby Winman, 88 tackles. That's a good number. Fourth in FBS. Stops, 50. That's 20th in FBS. And missed tackles, that's the problem. 27 second most in college football so that's a that that's the one to me that when you look at the film and you look at that number those match up really well because Winman's a fast linebacker he's flowing all over the football field and he tends to over pursue or not break down and kind of has to hit the brakes and skids into the ditch that's a problem with him on film but 88 tackles 50 stops those are accumulation numbers and that's because he was on the field a lot 795 Total plays on defense, that's a lot. Not only does he never come off the field, UNLV's defense never came off the field. They weren't very good. So that's how you accumulate a lot of a lot of those numbers. He's not a bad coverage player, and he's not a bad run defender. We'll get to some of the nuances that make him what he is. Um, and the first thing to know is that in all of those snaps, 
he's playing a lot of different positions, wearing a lot of different hats. The first game I watched, he's primarily playing the will position, the weak side linebacker on the short side of the football field. And he's filling in uh, his gap. He's getting in the gap and not making a ton of plays, but he's not out of position. Then the next thing you know, he shifted over. He's at the Mike linebacker. He's dropping into coverages 15 yards downfield in certain coverages. And then the next game I watched, he's playing the Sam linebacker position on the field side, the long side of the football field, covering players in the slot, running to the sideline, doing what, if you've watched Penn State football, what Curtis Jacobs was doing this past season. So he's every linebacker position from the slot, middle linebacker, he played everywhere for UNLV. And uh, as, a, as a bonus to that, he's also a pretty good pass rusher, and that's an area that I think is also really appealing for any team that's looking at Winman in the portal, is you can also use him there. So in deep coverage, in the box, out of the box, and then seven sacks, 14 pressures, all on less than 100 rushes. So he's not going to be a guy that you see going after the quarterback regularly, but if you do blitz him, he is getting pressure and he is affecting the passer. That's a big thing because you've seen a lot of ineffective blitzes that kind of just go nowhere. And then you're you're just a man down in coverage. He's not going to do that to you as many times. Good at slipping in between blockers and getting to the quarterback. Not a guy that's going to defeat anybody with power or with great pass rushing moves, but he can dip and bend. He finds the crevices and gets to the quarterback. So I, I, I like that part of his game. Um, one of the things I've noticed is that he is doing, as I said, he's doing a lot of different positions. Uh, he's, in, he's in a lot of different coverage situations. Um, but he's also, I think, trying to make up for a lot of mistakes on the UNLV defense. A lot of times when you're, when you're pursuing to the football, what he does in the box really well is he surfs the trash to get to the point of attack. His eyes are on the running back. He can see the running back well. He's 6'2", 230, so he's got good size to go with all that fluidity and movement skills. The problem is he's he's going over, he's bubbling over a lot of players. He's not defeating blocks and getting upward momentum up the field, which is fine if there aren't a bunch of blockers in his way. So he's having to take a wide angle, come around fast, and then he can't bend back to the runner to get the tackle. And that's where you get a lot of those over-pursuit missed tackles. That or he's running across the field because he's trying to make up for a big play or a mistake somebody else made, and then he over-pursues that way. So speed can be a double-edged sword. And I think that's a big part of his formula of what the next school is going to need to do with him. But all that versatility is also why he's really attractive to Texas and Michigan State and these places that are interested in having him play linebacker is because you can see sort of whatever you want in Winman because he's done so many different things for UNLV and he's a smart football player. So it's not just that he's doing a bunch of things. It's that he's in position most of the time. He's not out of position. He's not making mental mistakes. You don't watch film and go, where in the world is he going? He reads his keys really well. He doesn't bite on fakes very hard. And when he does, he's able to flip and turn and run and get into his coverage assignment. And a lot of the, the breakdowns that he got pinned for, again, are some of the way UNLV plays coverage, where they're playing a little bit more of a match zone at times, or guys just run off. They're just following somebody they're not supposed to be following. And when you're at that level at UNLV and you're a good player, sometimes you, when you're doing your job, you get pegged with things that uh, are unfortunate, but that's, that's kind of the way it goes. So if you're a school, you can see him as a Mike linebacker if you're really squinting, or a Will or a Sam. To me, he is a field linebacker. He is just a, sh a tick over a safety. And maybe at Penn State, if he were to come to work with the Nittany Lions, they could get him up to 235, get him in Dwight Galt's weight program. Most of the players that have come through here have gotten bigger and stronger from their previous uh, colleges. So that would be something you could see him projecting to either position. Um, I think overall, the way I would put his game is if you take a look at what he does, three quarters of it is great. His recognition, his flow to the football, it's just in coverage allowing 82% of the receptions. He's not getting his hands on a lot of the balls that are thrown his way. And at the point of attack, I wouldn't say he's the most physical player in the world. He is by no means shying away from contact, but he's not usually the first guy making contact. And in the hole, he doesn't trigger downhill and explode through the running back the way you'd like a linebacker that is a box enforcer to do. 
So he's getting in position, he's making the tackle, he's he's there, but he's not getting tackles for loss or affecting massive change or making highlight plays. If he was, everyone would have heard his name already. He would have blown up and it wouldn't just be a couple of schools. It'd be every school looking for this football player. So I think three quarters of what he does is great. It's just that final thing that when you're recording the information, whether or not you missed the tackle, whether or not you got the catch, whether or not you broke it up, that's where he seems to struggle. And it's it's the most important quarter of the football field. And it's the most important quarter of what you're doing. But at the same time, if you're a coaching staff, it's it's your job to get that out of him, right? And you think, I can be the guy that can get this very talented football player to do those things. So that'll be something to see going forward. Uh, the next thing we're going to talk about is how he fits on the Penn State roster if he were to come to Penn State and play for the Nittany Lions. First, though, we want to talk about uh, the body washing two-in-one conditioner from Manscaped, like I promised you earlier, because I know you were desperate to hear about it. I've told you previously that my wife has a very high standard for the products that we use in the house. Can have phthalates, I think they're called, midichlorians, valets, something like that. I don't know what, what they're not allowed to be in our stuff, but the stuff that over time, I guess, causes cancer or whatever. Xenoestrogens? Something? Anyway, they're not supposed to be in what we use. And when I showed her the products from Manscaped, I was like, ooh, is it going to pass? Am I going to be able to use it? And they did. So not only... If you're watching the YouTube show, you can see how awesome my hair looks and how it all is in one spot. For most dudes that are just dudes, right? Like you just go and you wash your body and you get out of the shower and you don't think twice about it. Like you don't have curly hair. If I don't have a plan of attack when I go to take a shower and like every third day is a good hair day for me or that's the way it used to be because when I wash my hair, it turns into a Q-tip just everywhere. There's, there's nothing I can... And I got to be on camera. It's not like I can just put a baseball hat on and come on camera because that's not how I roll. So having the two-in-one conditioner, I get to live that life and have this head. So it's phenomenal. And then the body wash. This it's You ever have that body wash that just smells too much? Like it's just too much, right? Manscaped, it's subtle. It's nice. It makes you smell good without walk, when you walk up to somebody, you punch them in the face with your scent. And by the way, random tangent, why do men's scents only come in sandalwood, bear grease, and dirt? Seriously, you're o if you're a man, you're only allowed to smell like wood, cedar, cypress, sandalwood. Like, we're allowed to smell like things that don't involve manual labor. That's the whole point of washing yourself, so that you don't. And Manscaped, they, they didn't make it smell like sandalwood. So thank you. And if you want to get uh, that in the Performance Package 4.0, or if you want to check out other stuff from Manscaped, you can go to manscaped.com, 20% off plus free shipping with using the promo code 20PSU. That's 20PSU for 20% off plus free shipping. So Penn State, they need linebackers because they might lose two of them this offseason, two of their most veteran players in Ellis Brooks and Brandon Smith. And I would say at this point, it's likely that both of them leave and go to the NFL. So that leaves an interesting situation where, once again, they're lacking depth. And in the transfer portal, that is what Jacoby Windman brings you, is depth. And with that profile, we gave you the flexibility to play a couple of different positions. If you're looking at what they have on the roster, both Charlie Catcher, uh, who is a depth player, maybe he's moving on. But if you're looking at guys that are box linebackers, you've got, uh, Kobe King, the freshman, and then you got Tyler Elsden, a redshirt freshman. Those are the guys that I'm targeting as the next guy to take over at that Mike linebacker position for, for Ellis Brooks. Both of them, I think, have the profile to be good at that position, but is either going to be a will linebacker? Can Elsden play in coverage and play in the slot a little bit and, and not be exposed? That's going to be the, the to what I see going forward is are those guys splitting time at that Mike linebacker position or can they have one of them play both? And then what do you want to do with Curtis Jacobs? I thought he was really good this year in a really hard position of Sam linebacker. Do they want to move him into the box and have those three guys rotate at that spot? If they do, they absolutely need a guy like Winman to come in and play that uh, that Sam linebacker position because at least right now, 
I know that um, Jamari Budden is a really talented football player, but he's a redshirt freshman next year. We didn't see him like we saw Curtis Jacobs come in in his freshman season and play. So what is Penn State's view of him? Is he ready yet? Do they want to work him in that position as a key backup? Either way, they need another linebacker, and that's where I think Winman fits uh, Winman fits really well is at that Sam linebacker position because it is what he's best at, that speed and fluidity and ability to run and tackle, maybe not hit, but tackle, and it removes some of those issues that I think he has in the box as far as struggling at all times to get through uh, guys on the second level to get to the football effectively, not just to get there because he does always get there from what I've seen, just to make sure it's effective and you're not giving up five yards. It's three or two. That's where I think he fits in this defense. But I could also see if if there's a situation where they want to play him at both and they want to play Curtis Jacobs out at Sam, he could come in and play the other position because he's got the versatility in skills. So that's the BWI Daily Edition today on the transfer portal. Stay tuned. We'll have more information as it breaks when it comes to Penn State's recruiting and coaching and all those stuff happening this offseason and, of course, with bowl game against Arkansas. I'm your host, Thomas Frank Carr. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel, Blue White Illustrated on YouTube and wherever you get your podcasts. Talk to you tomorrow.